In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. We pray together. Almighty God, to whom all the hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The First Amendment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments, and to live in love and peace with all. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we, we have, have sinned, sinned against you and against, against our neighbour, in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and, and peace, peace to his people on earth. earth. Lord God, Lord, heavenly King, King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose only Son has opened for us a new and living way into your presence, give us pure hearts and steadfast wills, to worship you in spirit and in truth. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let's sit and attend to Scripture. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Welcome those who are weak in faith, but not for the purpose of quarreling over opinions. Some believe in eating anything, while the weak eat only vegetables. Those who eat must not despise those who abstain, and those who abstain must not pass judgment on those who eat. For God has welcomed them, who are you to pass judgment on servants of another? It is before their own Lord that they stand or, fa or fall, and they will be upheld, for the Lord is able to make them stand. Some judge one day to be better than another, while others judge all days to be alike. Let all be fully convinced in their own minds. 
those who observe the day observe it in honor of the Lord. All those who eat, eat in honor of the Lord, since they give thanks to God, while those who abstain, abstain in honor of the Lord and give thanks to God. We do not live to ourselves, and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, so that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. Why do you pass judgment on your brother or sister? Or you, why do you despise your brother or sister? For we, we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me and every tongue shall give praise to God. So then each of us will be accountable to God. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our psalm for today is Psalm 103, and the response is, The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger and of great kindness. He will not always accuse us, neither will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor rewarded us according to our wickedness. The Lord, the Lord is full of compassion and mercy. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy upon those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he set our sins from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so is the Lord merciful towards those who fear him. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Please stand as we acclaim the gospel. Alleluia! Welcome with meekness the implanted word that has the power to save our souls. Alleluia. Hear the, Lord of our, hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Peter came and said to Jesus, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, not seven times, but I tell you, seventy-seven times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began, began the reckoning, one who owed him ten thousand talents was brought to him. And as he could not pay, his lord ordered him to be sold, together with his wife and children, and all his possessions and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves, who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him by the throat, he said, Pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience with me, and I will pay you. But he refused. Then he went and threw him into prison until he would pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all the debt because you pleaded with me. She did not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you. And in anger, his Lord handing him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. 
This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart may be pleasing to you, O Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. So we have here Peter raising a very important question to Jesus. I assume that Peter was still dwelling on this uh, affirmation that Jesus uh, shared with his disciples early on when, when he said to them, For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you don't forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. So Peter came to Jesus, okay, so on this matter of forgiving others, how many times should I forgive others? Should I forgive seven times? And actually, Peter was being quite generous. If we speak from our own experience, if someone does some sort of uh, misdemeanor to us, somehow uh, offends us, sins against us, we, okay, I'll forgive you this time. Second time that that person does the same or a similar thing or as serious as the first time. And then, okay, I'm having my reservations now. But maybe I will forgive you. Then a third time occurs. Will you forgive that person again? Probably not. Because we, we become cautious and obviously we, in our own nature, uh, starts to react and we think, this person is not worthy of, of my forgiveness. And so Peter was being quite generous when he asked Jesus if he should forgive for seven times. Actually, from a rabbinic tradition, people should only seek forgiveness three times, not seven. So Peter was quite magnanimous. But then Jesus has this answer. So how many times should I forgive? Seven times? No, 70 times 7. So if, you, if your maths are right, you should have come up with 490 times that you should forgive your brother or your sister. And I suppose what Jesus want, meant was, by the time we reached the 100th uh, time that we were forgiving someone, oh, I can't, I can't be bothered to count, so I'll forgive anyway all the time. So what Jesus basically means not only seven times, which is a lot, I would say, but all the time, regardless of what people will do to you. So we should forgive all the time. And why does, um, why does uh, Jesus mention this, uh, this um, number, 70 times 70, 7? Obviously, he was referring to Genesis 4.24, where Lamech, Cain's descendant, boasts that if Cain was avenged sevenfold, he would be avenged seventy-sevenfold. So this speaks of an ever-increasing spiral of violence to which humans may fall prey to. The godly response to this can only be a constant exercise in forgiveness, seventy times seven, not sometimes, not many times, but always. So why was Jesus then sharing this parable about death? Obviously, to the listeners, they would be reminded of the tyrants that they were under. They would be reminded of uh, the dominion that the Romans had uh, under um, Palestine, over Palestine. And they would remember also um, uh, Judean uh, dictators that were ruling them. Jesus, when was talking about this Lord that forgave, he, used, he was referring to death. So what has forgiveness to do with death? In Aramaic, the word hob can be both translated as sin and death. It is not by chance that Matthew translated it as death when conveying his version of the Lord's Prayer. Forgive us our debts as we forgive those 
toward our depth. So we're in depth when we owe someone their important possessions, their money, their treasure. With sin, we owe someone's respect, acknowledgement, dignity, and love. Our immense debt toward God is cancelled and forgiven. As Colossians 2.14 has it, He forgave us all our trespasses, erasing the record that stood against us with its legal demands. He set this aside, nailing it to the cross. So in this parable, we have two contrasting attitudes. We have someone who owes 10,000 talents. 10,000 talents, in today's term, it would, be, it would be equivalent to millions of pounds. It would mean that this person, if he would be working at um, the rate that a, a worker would receive uh, per day, he would have to, to work several lives in order to pay everything that he owed. So it would be in vir uh, virtually impossible for him to pay all his debt. And nevertheless, the Lord shows compassion to him. And then this guy goes to his fellow servant, so someone who is sharing the same fate as he, and he demands him the denarii that he owed him. So basically, three or four months worth of salary. So nothing much compared to what he owed to his Lord. And he should be aware, he should be reminded of the mercy that he had received from his Lord. And nevertheless, he decided to be ruthless and to demand what was nevertheless his own, but was ruthless and demanded his, his, what was his own. And so he didn't show the same mercy that he had received from his Lord. So there are two contrasting attitudes. Our animal nature, what the Bible calls the flesh, asks us to seek revenge and to withhold forgiveness when something wrong is done to us. The egotistic mindset focuses on restitution. The spiritual nature asks us to forgive, to let go of revenge, and remind us that if our misdeeds were to be taken into account, we would be by far worse off than the ones that offended us. So we have to forgive others so that we may be forgiven. Forgive us our sins so that forgive our sins as we forgive those who have sinned against us. We pray this every day. We will pray this today in the Eucharist. And sometimes we forget that we can only pray for forgiveness if we have taken the initiative of forgiving others. Don't even think of asking for God's forgiveness when you still hold grudges against your brother and sister. So forgiveness in, the, in this sense is conditional. First you forgive so that you might be forgiven. This is why Jesus tells us that before we bring an offering to God, we should settle our accounts with our fellow brother and sister. So this God of all releases, releases us from the difficulties of our faults, the 10,000 talents, on the proviso that we ourselves release our fellow servants from the denarii, that is, from the few minor faults that they have committed against us. So our challenge, two challenges that I would like to leave with you today. Maybe the most difficult one is this. Check your heart and see who you need to forgive today. Before you take communion today, make the firm commitment to seek that person that needs your forgiveness. Or perhaps you need to seek that person's forgiveness. Don't lose time and speak to him or her today. Perhaps that person is quite close to you but because of a misunderstanding or because of what you did to each other, there's a rift. That person needs to hear, needs to know, 
you have forgiven them. That person needs to hear from you that you are seeking forgiveness. And the second challenge, try to apply more and more the law of mercy, the law of mercy and love toward your neighbor instead of dwelling in this law of restitution that only in the end brings violence. Amen. Let us stand and affirm together our faith in God. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Dear Father, we bring before you a prayer for the church, the world, and our community. We pray for our leaders, for Archbishop Justin and Archbishop Stephen in Canterbury and York. We pray also for our own bishop, Peter, as he leads our diocese in this moment of transition. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Amen. We pray for all the churches uh, in the Anglican Communion, and we pray especially today for the Diocese of Otupo in Nigeria, and Central Busoga in Uganda, and Kizangani in Congo. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Yeah. In the world, we pray we may keep a balance between enjoying our freedom, restoring the economy, and we, we the need to contain COVID-19. We remember those who have been furloughed, those who have lost their jobs, companies that have collapsed, and we pray that restoration may occur in our economical tissue. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We pray with Christian aid for the families and especially children across the world that they may get enough food and avoid malnutrition. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We pray for our parish, for all of the churches who are celebrating today your mysteries, for St. Edmunds, for St. Mary Magdalene's, for St. Albans, and for St. Bartholomew's. 
We pray for all of its members, those who worship here, those who live or who are just uh, passing by in this area. We pray for those who are in need in our community, for all of those who are mentioned in the newsletter, especially Roxanne Bashir, Shirley Dubois, Cassie Martin, Graham Postles, and several more. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. We also give thanks, you, thanks, O Lord, for the gift of life, for those who have celebrated their birthday. For Les Rowley, for Elizabeth Ogmian Anio, and for Spencer Farragher. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. We pray also for those who have died, who have joined you in glory. All of those who are dear to us. And we pray especially for the soul of Melvin Malcolm. May she rest in peace. And Lord. And so, Lord, we pray that you may accept his prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. You're able, please stand. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body through the cross. We meet in his name and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us share with one another kindness. Peace with you. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for your goodness we have this wine to set before you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, that will become for you the cup of salvation. Blessed be you. Look upon us in mercy, not in judgment. Draw us from hatred to love. Make the frailty of our praise a dwelling place for your glory. Amen. Amen. If you're able, please stand. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit he took flesh. As your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, ever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Bartholomew, St. Alban, St. Edmund, St. Mary Magdalene, St. Paul, St. George, St. Martin, and all the saints of our glorious Christ, we may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. 
Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. The body and blood of Christ keep you in eternal life. Amen.
Let us pray. Lord God, the source of truth and love, keep us faithful to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, united in prayer and the breaking of bread, and one in joy and simplicity of heart. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. So, um, a, a warm welcome to you all. Um, there is a DCC after the service. Uh, we'll come back in here. Um, so, uh, so, we'll leave the chairs socially distanced uh, as they are, uh, uh, and we'll actually do it like that. Um, I think there are a couple of people joining us by Zoom as well. Um, so, uh, Marco and I will endeavour to sort out the technology um, and hope it doesn't defeat us. Um, so just bear with us for a little while, um, actually, uh, to do that. Uh, we hope to open St. Bart's Cafe. Um, we said Monday the 5th of October. It's actually going to be Tuesday the 6th, uh, because we're, we're going to, the plan is to open the cafe four days a week. And, and on balance, we think Tuesday to Friday is better than Monday to Thursday. So it will be Tuesday the 6th of October, provided things haven't actually changed uh, by then. Um, so watch uh, this space. Um, do continue to gather together fragments for a parish lockdown scrapbook. Uh, the time to actually bring all that together will be the annual meetings. So, so we'll assemble that at the annual meetings and I will try to have someone to photograph everything in each church or if we're all together, all together. Um, so the, the annual meetings date, which is the 4th of October, it is the date that we're actually going to do some of that kind of uh, reflecting. Um, Marco's ordination is in two weeks' time, so he actually won't be here um, next weekend, because uh, you, you're not really getting a proper ordination retreat, are you? But, but you're kind of having a, a week of personal retreat uh, before your ordination. Um, and then on the 26th of September, uh, Marco will be ordained. Um, the ordination itself is an invitation-only event with strictly limited numbers. Uh, but then we have a joint parish Eucharist here on the 27th, so in two weeks' time. Note the time. It will be at 10.30, and the preacher, um, who is known to many of you, um, is uh, Reverend uh, Pat Mossop. So hopefully you will be there then. Um, annual meetings, 4th of October. Uh, the arrangements for that will appear uh, next week. Um, and we are continuing our Bible study. Uh, we have one more on the Psalms of Ascent. We will finish uh, on the Psalms of Ascent on the 21st of September, and then we're going to have a little break, and then in October and November, uh, we're going to be uh, looking together at the Book of Ruth. So uh, that is on Zoom. Uh, do please join us um, if you can. Um, I think that's all. Um, so, uh, would you like to stand and bow your heads to receive God's blessing? The Lord be with you. The God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ Jesus, 
establish, strengthen and settle you in that faith. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you today and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.